Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today I'm doing a video on a 2017 Ford Focus Electric. This is a base model car. The color you see is Oxford White with a tan, eco-friendly cloth interior. This video will be basically shot in four segments. The first segment will be myself walking around the vehicle, just showing you what it looks like from the outside. Zooming into some details, if there's anything that kind of stands out to me, tell you my impressions of the exterior. And then the second segment will be the interior. And that's basically just stepping into the interior, looking around, pushing buttons, honking the horn, turning on the wipers, kind of playing with the video display. So all the kind of things that you might encounter when you're inside the car. Third segment will be driving impressions. I'll take it on the road, take it on some twisty roads, take it on a highway, go through a tunnel, kind of show you what impressions are as I'm driving it. And fourth segment will basically be just charging, any kind of charging uh, issues I have or any delights that I find with the car, and then uh, any kind of final thoughts. One of my favorite features of the Ford Focus Electric is the styling. They did a really good job at preserving the styling of the car. It is a Ford Focus. It doesn't try to pretend to be something it isn't. I mean, the only thing that's really different is the grille is a little bit different. There's some badging. And, of course, the port on the left front part of the car is there for charging. But other than that, the wheels are a little bit different, but you don't really notice that too much. And so the car basically looks just like any other Focus, which is a really good thing. So this is a 2017 model, so it has the new 33.5 kilowatt battery pack, which is a 46% improvement over the old one, which was only 23 kilowatts. Yet the, the weight of the car actually manages to stay about the same as the outgoing model, about 3,600 pounds. It also has the fast charging capability now, which is a big improvement over the old car because that only had a level 2. So when you need to fast charge it, it should only take about 30 minutes to get it up to 80% or so. And if you're charging on a level 2 charger at, at the maximum 6.6 uh, .6 kilowatts per hour, what used to take 3.5 hours now takes 5.5 because of the bigger battery pack. Otherwise, the Magna supplied powertrain for the vehicle is a carryover. It still produces 143 horsepower, 184 pounds of torque, and the battery pack is still carried over as a liquid-cooled and heated LG Chem battery pack, which has been proven to be incredibly reliable. The 0-60 to 60 time remains as it was before, about 10 seconds or so, which is perfectly adequate for most driving. It feels much faster when you actually drive it, but that's the official number. And the car now has an EPA range of 115 miles compared to the previous model, which was only 76. I like that the rear suspension is a multi-link, which is really nice. It's a true independent suspension, which is a nice thing to have on a car of this size. Some of the competition uses a cheaper trailing beam axle, which is actually more of a rigid axle, which is not independent. So you will notice the difference when you go over certain bumpy roads. I also like the fact that the car does have a 5-star crash rating. It has basically all the safety features of any car of that vintage. They also have an eco-friendly cloth interior on this particular model, which is actually made from 100% recycled materials. Even the uh, foam is not traditional foam. It's actually derived from soybeans. So the car seems to have all the right stuff. So why is it that they only sold 7,000 units between 2012 and 2016 and only another 2,500 units for 17 and 18 combined? The one Achilles heel of this whole car is definitely that big massive battery pack, one of two, that's located in the vehicle. One is under the rear seat and the other one is right in the middle of the cargo area, totally disrupting the whole cargo capacity of a hatchback. The electric version loses 10 cubic feet down from 23.3 down to 14.5 and from 43.9 with the seat down to 33.2. Or it might have been that Ford simply wanted to limit production intentionally. I like the interior design of this car. It's pretty nice. I like the way it has the tan and the black. It's a nice interior design. I like it. This one has the uh, recycled material, cloth material. You can get leather as an option.
mentioned before, I, I like the interior design. It's nice materials. I mean, it's hard plastics, but it's it's a nice uh, color combination. They do a nice mix of different materials. One touch up. Turn the audio off. We don't want that on. car has a funny uh, turn signal sound. It sounds like a 1980s video game to me, like Donkey Kong or something. Something. Some sort of old video game from the 80s. It's kind of funny. Cruise control. This this car has Sync 3, so it has the, the latest version of Sync, at least as of now, but when this car was built. regular car horn that's good display mode so yeah we have different uh, controls here so the left control is control that little display and then the right side over here controls this side oh So it has all kinds of interesting tech and stuff integrated in. It's kind of nice. Audio controls. This has a nice way of uh, not turning on automatically. Some cars they just always have the audio on for some reason. Very simple, just to turn it off right there. Phone, nav, apps. It's pretty easy to use. Every every uh, manufacturer has a different system, so you get used to it. It's pretty simple. <laughs> no, we do not want 911 assist. Hopefully, it doesn't. We got here. Oh, here we go. Wi-Fi. Hmm. 
That's interesting. I wonder if this actually connects. It's not like you can search the internet or anything. I don't think it does that. Apple CarPlay. Oh yeah, this has and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so that's that's good to have. It's good to have those variations. It's good to have variety. Oh, interesting. So this does data status state of charge for the battery. Interesting. I had to hunt in search for this to find that. It's the only place I've seen it. 87%. Interesting. I wonder if you can set the max charge, because that would be lovely. If you could set this to 90%, for, for example, if you never want to charge it to 100, just to kind of preserve the battery a little bit more. It'd be nice to be able to do that. I don't think you can do that. You can, this is, there is a timer, but you can't. Don't think you can do the other thing. As far as. It'd be nice if you could. Ambient lighting. Ah, charge port light. Interesting. Camera settings. Oh yeah, wait, this car has uh, ambient lighting. I'm pretty sure this is standard. You can kind of see it when you open up the thing and you can kind of see it's set to red. I think it shows up elsewhere in the car. We'll try to show you that a little later if I can get in a darker location here. Anyway, moving on, moving on. So this has a Sony system, obviously, for the audio. Audio is really good, actually. I like the audio. It sounds really good, good quality. Charge port release. One thing nice about this car, it has just a regular kind of looking automatic transmission type of shifter. It has a conventional handbrake too. It's kind of nice. Of course we have our heated seats. And our ventilation. Very easy to turn it on and off. Adjust it. USB port, 12 volt. The key actually has a remote start feature too, so it doesn't actually start the car, but it will precondition pre the car. So I prefer to do that when the car is plugged in. But it does have that feature if you want to adjust the climate before you come back to the car. car is almost brand new so it has pretty much all the most of the stuff that the new car has so you have like a nice big owner's manual for the car okay so the car drives really nice I really enjoy driving this car it does have a multi-link suspension in the back, which is nice, and you can definitely feel it when you're going around these corners, and then the, it definitely handles nicely, and it has a really nice, smooth, isolated ride, too. As I mentioned before, I like the interior design. I think it's very pleasant, very, uh, very nice to look at, you know? It's not, I mean, it's not fine materials, but it is, um, it's a nice color combination, nice textures and stuff, nice different variety of materials. The steering wheel seems kind of vinyl, vinyl like though. I'm not, not a fan of this. This could be improved. This could be like a nice Napa leather like some of the other cars have been, but this one's kind of a little bit not quite as nice in that department. But um, I imagine if you get the leather, the optional leather interior, that has a really nice, that has a nice uh, leather. Uh, I don't know if it has a leather wheel, but it, I would think it would come with that package, I would think. So of course one of the nice things about this car is the exterior styling 
is um, it looks just like any other Focus really. I mean the grill looks a little bit different. If you look at the left front quarter panel, you notice that there's a charge port instead of a fuel tank uh, port. So they deleted one thing and added another, but you know, other than that, it looks pretty much just like any other Focus, which I like. I like that it looks really nice. It doesn't stand out. Now some people might want to stand out more, but this is the kind of car that if you just want a car, you don't want to, you know, be all waving the, the electric. I'm driving an electric car flag and say, you know, hey, look at me. You know, if you just want to get a really good electric car, this is a very nice option. It's very much like the e-golf. I like how that both the e-golf, I think the, the most comparable car would probably be the e-golf because it just has that same kind of, same about the same size, about the same range. And um, same kind of driving characteristics. This is more of a fun to drive, more, more, more suspension dynamics, uh, you know, better driving dynamics, you know, as opposed to, you know, some of the other cars that don't quite have that. So it's more of a driver's car, essentially. Not too heavy. And of course, this is a 2017, so it has the 33.5 kilowatt battery upgrade, which is a nice thing to have. That puts the EPA range up to 115. The motor power is the same as all the uh, previous years. Uh, the 13 through 16 is it's basically the same. Everything is pretty much the same. They just um, upgraded the, uh, the battery pack. It's a much larger capacity. And then they also added fast charging, which is a game changer too. So now you have more range and you have fast charging. And then, you know, some people will compare this car to say a, a Chevy Bolt, as in boy. They'll compare that car to this one and say, oh, this one only has half the range. Well, that's true, but the fast charger is only capable of going so fast when you're charging. So, for example, if both cars, that car and this car, were both, you know, at, let's just say they were at 5% or something and you needed to charge it up to, you know, you needed to charge up the car enough to make it 100 miles to get home. With this car, it would be most of a charge. But the time it would take to do that would be identical to the Chevy Bolt. So despite that car having twice the range, this car, it would take just as long to charge up the car to go that distance. Some other things that sets this car a little bit apart from some of the other, some of the competition is that there's no, it's actually an analog gauge. It's, there's no, um, I mean, it's, you know, it's electronically fed, of course, but it's, but there's actually a physical, you know, mechanical dial right here. So. It's a little bit different. I mean, the e-Golf does that, and um, I think that's the only other car that does it. So I really think this car really competes against the e-Golf the most. But it's um, and then of course the Leaf they actually uh, changed that with the uh, the updated, the refresh, the latest refresh one for 2018. They actually went back to an analog gauge similar to this actually, though it's offset to the right for some reason. But this one. It's dead center right where you want it to be, but it is a little bit, it is a little bit, uh, I don't know, it's, it's like if you really like that analog gauge, I think it's, it's kind of, if you're used to that and you only like that kind of thing, I mean, to me personally, I mean, for when it comes to speed, it's like a nice digital readout is, is fine, it's, it's really what all I really need to see, nice big numbers that you can see dead center, that's really the ideal, I find that to be the most ideal thing for myself, but, uh, but you know, it's, it's personal preference, oh, we've got another focus here that's confused. So, um, I'm trying to think what else there is. Okay, so the driving, like I said, like I mentioned before, this, this has a conventional shifter down here, which is kind of nice too. I think this would really make a really nice car for somebody who's just getting their very first EV because it, it has a lot of the similarities to the the gas version of the same car like if you if you were coming out of a Ford Focus automatic transmission car you know you'd, you'd feel pretty much right at home when you get in this one it would be it basically feels the same it has a similar shifter the only thing that's a little bit different is we have a we have a, a D selector down here we have an L selector which um, L is sort of like brake mode so the car tends to coast when you put it in D. I drive it in L all the time because I, I like the region. I like to be able to take my foot off the pedal and the car brakes. So it doesn't do it as much as other cars though. It's not like the i3. It's not like the Tesla. Tesla's. 
Some other unique features about the car when you reach in, it has this little brake coach thing down here that tells you, no other car that I've driven that's electric has this. It just tells you kind of like, it shows you each time. You can turn it on and off, but uh, it tells you each time when it's on, it tells you like when you brake, it tells you how efficient your braking is. It's kind of like, I guess the Nissan Leaf has the little leaf growing thing, you know, the little plants, that, that little shrub that flowers up and put leaves out. And, that kind of thing it kind of tells you how good you're doing as far as efficiency so this one it just tells you when you're braking that if you're regening it so it will give you a static number and tell you what did you do 100 percent regen and braking on that or did you do 78 <clears throat> percent so it tells you a little bit of inf extra information i don't know if you could really find it useful it's supposed to have like um ambient lighting and it wouldn't be going into a tunnel here right now let me see if we can show what the ambient lighting looks like here. Let me slow down a little bit. It has like auto auto headlights. Pretty cool. Hey, it took a little bit of some time to ramp up there as it was starting to charge. But you can see you have the four lights there that indicate the status of charge. They changed this for 17s a little bit different for the older cars to have it's more of a ring kind of effect instead of those four lights. But that kind of gives you an idea of what the what the state of charge is. This car is pretty much fully charged, so it shouldn't be too much of a Let's see what happens here. See if it gives us any uh, percentage of charge or anything like that. Hopefully we get something. It's definitely nice to have those lights, but of course they are out there by the plug, so it's not on the dash or anything. So there should be something for the inside occupants to know what the status of charge is. So hopefully we'll find something here. So I did find this on their apps. There's a charging high voltage battery state here. So it shows that it's charging the battery. Doesn't say how much though. Doesn't say how long it's gonna be. It just says power flow. So you have that option. So that's pretty much it, just power flow. That's the only thing that they show you. There's nothing in here that indicates what the percent of charge is. So you have to go outside and, and uh, look at the lights to indicate it would be nice if there was something inside there should be something on the display here that tells you that I mean I guess you do have this it does go up so it, is, it did go up a couple miles in the last few minutes here so but other than that there's no other indication it would be nice to know a state of charge percentage well that's going to do it for this review of a 2017 Ford Focus electric I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you found it useful please like and subscribe if you did Many more videos to come.